What's up everybody, I am Mike and this is my Batman Red Hood custom action figure tutorial. Now this figure sits at about 6 to 7 inches tall and is based on a Marvel Legends DC, a uh, Marvel Legends Captain America figure of course and he comes with two custom Desert Eagles. I've also made sure to add some gloss varnish on his helmet and logo to make them a bit more shiny and added a lot more pastel chalk to give him that extra special shadow. Now this version of Red Hood isn't actually based on the new one from the video games where he's wearing this kind of strange looking vest hoodie hybrid but I'm sort of starting to get the feel of it and getting used to it. It's a bit different but I kind of still like the original ones that you've seen in the Injustice games from WB before. And as you can see, this one from Injustice is quite different, but it's still reminiscent of the classic Red Hood where he's pretty much just wearing body armor with or without a bat logo on top and with a brown leather jacket. And for today I actually also want to base Red Hood on this classic design. So what we need isn't the crazy what the hell ever this kind of outfit is and oh my god Jesus Christ is that a hoodie on top of a helmet? What are you even doing here? Anyway for today we want to focus on the good old classic Red Hood and that means taking apart this Captain America figure over here. Now the first step actually just involves sculpting over his points of articulation and you can see the yellow spots on the side where I have already applied epoxy. And once again we will need something for the leather jacket so this little piece of um I don't even know what this is. I think this is from some kind of Final Fantasy Lightning Play Arts Kai but I don't know any type of fabric or random material from a different action figure you have lying around would be suitable for this. Now let's just quickly remove his... Oh Jesus Christ he looks so good. <laughs> wow I wasn't expecting that. Okay now once we have removed the helmet we will make sure to never do this again and we'll immediately start sculpting over it so he doesn't look like a horrible abomination. Now let's just remove the face and there we go. Well if you put the helmet on him he doesn't even look that bad. Now let's continue. First thing you'll actually need to do is pick up your Dremel and with that we will all obviously start to remove the logo on his chest because we will naturally sculpt our own bad logo on this Captain America body. So let's start by just turning on the drill and there we go. We can start by removing all the belts from his shoulders, carefully get rid of those, flip him over to the side and then you'll want to remove as much plastic as you possibly can. There we go. liberally make sure to also remove the logo there we go that's all the plastic you want to remove and after that there we go now you can see our good old friend Tamiya epoxy putty you'll always have a white and a yellow component for the quick type that's still my favorite putty to use when I'm sculpting figures you'll also want your sculpting tools a pair of needles is always nice to maybe put in some little details the ones I 
have here have served me well over the years and I'll always recommend having a couple of them nice. There we go. Next step, I've already went ahead and screwed in the little piece of plastic you've seen before for his jacket and I've also found a pretty nice looking collar which I'm going to use here. Most of the plastic is already gone and I'm currently mixing the epoxy and now we can start applying it on his chest. There we go, just liberally start rubbing it on him and once we have enough we can use our scalpel to slowly but surely start cutting in the shape of the bat symbol. Now make sure that you don't overdo it and simply create your own symmetrical symbol. Start with this re rectangular shape and cut along the sides. There we go. You can always use the excess epoxy you've cut away to sculpt a little bit more of the logo on the side. Remember to always flatten and smooth out the surface. There we go, get rid of all the excess epoxy we don't want, then pick up a little needle and there we go, get rid of that too.
And after a while, we should have our finished logo. Great. And of course, we don't want to waste all the other epoxy we have just used. So we can already start putting it on the jacket. There we go. This will of course hide the screws and all the thread I have used to make sure that this piece of jacket stays on. And there we go. That's already starting to look much more nicely. Remember, if you want to have this smooth and flat surface, you actually have to work for it, alright? This means picking up a scalpel and doing just what I'm doing right now, which is simply but surely drawing the scalpel along the surface to remove and flatten it down, carefully sand down all the material and sooner or later Slowly but surely, it will start to look much more smoothly. There we go. A lot more smoother than before. Alright, just continue doing that for a while. And once everything looks smooth, you should be good. Alright. Now, the next step involves sculpting over all the joints of articulation I haven't sculpted over before and using all our remaining epoxy to make sure that the jacket looks nice. We can also do the same on the goons I have shown in the other video from before. Sculpt over their joints too. And next up I will show you how I've actually done and sculpted Red Hood's helmet.
I've used these... What? What are those even? I'm, I'm not really playing Fortnite, alright? I'm sorry. I, that's, I, I don't know how to build, but... I will admit, these McFarlane figures from Fortnite, they are quite useful for sculpting toys, so... More power to you if you enjoy them. And I've used these... What? I don't know, Ghost Rider type helmets to sculpt Red Hood's helmet. These came with the red goons I've used before and as I just mentioned, this actually is quite a nice base if you want to make your own custom Red Hood sculpt. Now, as you can see, in order to get the jacket done, we will need to apply this little epoxy sausage to the side and use our sculpting tools to get it into shape. After a while it should look a little like this and make sure to always add some water to your sculpt so your tools don't stick to the surface and drag it down too much. Now let's see about them details with this needle. Carefully point them inside. There we go. Just along the lines here and that's pretty much it. That's all you really need to do to sculpt Red Hood. It's quite simple, if you really think about it. Now, once the sculpt is finished, we can actually move on and start painting. And of course, the first thing you'll want to do is make a base coat. And for that, we will naturally need some black and white acrylic paint. Just put it onto your mixing plate, add a little bit of water, and there we go. Just liberally apply all the paint to his armor and combat pants. There we go. This should be a nice dark black gray looking base coat. Just liberally apply it to his boots as well. There we go. Paint the back side of his pants too. And. Once we are moving on to the boots, you'll also want to switch to a darker coat of paint. Mix some in there as well. There we go, this already starts looking a lot better. For his shirt you will of course want to use a bit of a brighter coat of grey, so all you really have to do is add in some white until you have the desired coat.
next up we will of course mix our brown leather jacket paint. For that you won't just use some regular brown, we'll also want some red and black paint. That's always one of the better ways to get your own shade of brown. Just use some red and some black. Sometimes you also want to mix some yellow and with that we can get our own shade going on. And once again liberally apply it to the entire surface. Make sure that you cover everything, even the backside, every little detail. Make sure that you don't leave anything unpainted. And once again it's always better to do two thin coats instead of one thick coat. So just let the paint dry for a couple of minutes. Do something else, I don't know, get a coffee, if you don't like coffee get some water or a tea. And then come back, do another layer and you're done with the base coat. last thing of course will be painting the logo and with a much smaller brush and some red acrylics we can do that and also do the same for his helmet. Just a basic red paint coat is all we need for the base and once we are done with everything we can move on and start inking. For that of course you will just need some black acrylics and a lot of water. that we will just water down our paint and then liberally apply it to the entire surface. There we go, just coat the entire helmet in black paint until everything starts sticking to those darker details. There we go, now the helmet looks a lot better and while this is drying we can move along and start giving his jacket and skin a bit more details. Use some brown and white paint for the skin on his collar 
and then move on and start painting his boots with a little bit of dark gray and some black and now begins the fun part where we start dry brushing which means pretty much like what it sounds like where we have a surface that is almost so dry that only the raised areas of the, of the paint of the sculpt are pronounced with paint and in order to do that all you really have to do is get your paint and make sure that you don't have too much water and with your brush you can wipe off almost all the excess paint you want and then with the remaining paint we have on our brush just liberally brush all over the entire surface and as you can see only the raised areas are pronounced and stick out. There we go, do the same on his backside and his uniform, dry brush his combat boots with a lighter shade of grey, do the same on his armor as well and make sure that with each paint, with each coat of paint you not only just brighten up the color, you'll also want to make sure that you lose less and less paint with each layer. This will make sure that the highlights stick out even more and as a final layer we can lose we can use just a little bit of white on him and there we go do the same on his logo as well and apply some red paint over there
and after the helmet is also completely dry we can once again start dry brushing that too and there we go only the details down below are dark while our main surface is nice and red Give the eyes a little bit of white as well and we're almost done. Now comes another tricky part. You will want to mix pastel chalk with our acrylics paint. So once again pick up your soft all free pastel chalk, pick up a, pas a scalpel and sand down the powder on your mixing plate. And then mix it in with your acrylics and this will give your paint that special matte flavor which I don't know only only pastel chalk really makes your figure look that much more special in my opinion that's why I just love using it it's in my opinion even if it's a kind of a bastardization to say it it's like Photoshop for figures like for real it just blends the paint and if you use pastel chalk on your figure you will make sure that you turn pretty much every little toy you paint into a real piece of art. Anyway, that's just me gushing about pastel pa chalk, which once again, if you have used it just once, you will know what I mean, because this soft all-free pastel chalk is really the best thing you can use on your figures if you just want to pick up the pace and make... I don't even know what I'm saying right now anymore. And I'm just ringing it. I'm not, I'm not cutting this out, alright? So, bear with me. <laughs> anyway.
as you can see right now I'm just using the pastel chalk without the acrylics and this is what I meant by describing it as Photoshop for paint because it really starts blending the paint all right if you just liberally apply a bit of red and dark brown on this leather jacket it automatically starts looking a lot better and our raised highlights start looking a lot less like acrylics on a surface and a lot more like an old dusty leather jacket which is of course the look we wanted for Red Hood from the beginning. Now remember of course pastels can only get darker they can never really get brighter so the last thing you'll always want to do is use black pastel chalk because this will be the darkest layer and you'll want to make sure that you have used all the brighter coats for I don't know light brown jacket parts and at the end you can just use some dark pastels and put them on your figure as shadows and once you're done with that all you really need to do is use a can of satin or matte varnish to seal your figure and make sure that the paint actually sticks on it
and after that we can also sometimes use some gloss varnish to give our figure some extra layer of detail. A little bit on the eyes and the helmet will make it pop and look that much more reflective and if we put it on our logo it will also look a bit wet and like body armor. And there we go, that's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching and you can always subscribe, like the video, do all that jazz, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the usual suspect of social media sites. And of course I also have a Patreon where you can get exclusive access to uncut and longer videos, new videos, earlier content and once again thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>